Welcome back, folks, to The Real Men of Real Estate here on KCAA Radio. I'm talking to Rob Overstreet. Um, after going a little bit through the uh, kind of economics of the situation and where things might go, which always a little nebulous, right? That's right. <laughs> um, I'd like to get to know just a little bit more about what is the day-to-day, you know, in your business operating this system. How does it work? Yep. So, um Maybe we can break it down like this, Dan. Let, let, you know, I can walk you, your listeners through, you know, how to do a deal, right? So, and, and, and yeah. kind, of, kind of the steps. So, as far as the day to day goes, you know, again, it boils down to those those two lowest common denominators. We're always looking at deals, and we're always looking for new investors. So, you know, most of my time is filled with um, either you know underwriting new opportunities mm-hmm. and and understanding the stories behind them and and seeing if it would be a good fit for our Right. Um, company and our investors, right? right? The, the value and proposition fits your model effectively. It, exactly. Okay. And then, um, and then the other part of the time is spent, you know, on the phone with investors, answering questions, educating our investors. We have a full investor club where there's a monthly newsletter and things. And oh wow, that's you know, fantastic. People, yeah, and you know, if your listeners are interested, they can check it out at HarborDriveHoldings.com. There's a link you can check it out, but. Um, so th- those are the two lowest common denominators, but what, what happens when we have an accepted offer, right? Like let's right. walk through that. So, um, we just had a deal, um, just last week that has an accepted offer. And so we're in like crunch mode now for the next, uh, 60 oh, to days, Dan, Congratulations! Um, but, um, thank you. I appreciate it. And so, um, so anyways, um, you know, it, it starts with the underwriting, right? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Um, broker sends us or seller sends us, you know, a financial statement, a rent roll, any information we can gather. And, um, you know, we do that kind of early preliminary due diligence. We run the numbers, see if it's a fit for us, if we can pay our investors, you know, the cash flow that they mm-hmm. are looking for. And, and if there's any type of, like we talked about in the last segment, you know, that value proposition, right? So that's the first kind of sniff test, right? Um, if it passes, then we will uh, submit what's called a letter of intent, which is a fancy word for an offer, right? So, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's kind of a proposed offer, even, right? Correct. Yeah, and it, and it has some, you know, some high level terms, um, the price, the earnest money, you know, what our timeline requirement would be for, you know, due diligence, closing timeline, any extensions. You know, it's just it's a real high. It's a, it's an offer. You know, they call it an LOI. So submit the LOI. Presuming that our LOI is accepted, now we're all high fiving. We got a new deal, but now the real work begins, right? So, um, you know, the the first thing w- w- that we do once we have an accepted LOI is, um, you know, we have to establish a team. There, there's uh, lots of third party, you know, people involved with these transactions. We have um, a contract, real estate contract attorney that is helping represent us against the seller, against the the lender. Um, we have a securities attorney that prepares all of the investor documents, you know, which would include um, the private placement memorandum, which mm-hmm. AKA the, the PPM, right. um, the investor um, subscription agreement, which is what the investors, you know, kind of fill out to, to subscribe to this, you know, private offering, um, operating agreements, et cetera. Um, you know, we, we contact all of our insurance brokers. We, we start to, um, organize and schedule our due diligence team, right? Because, um, some of the deals that we're looking at are a hundred, 150, 200 units. And, you know, that could take a couple takes, of days. Yeah. That takes a lot to, of hands to get through that. Wow. Totally. You know, and, and so we, we might have, you know, 12 to 15, you know, due diligence team members, We'll all, you know, pick wow. a day that works for everyone. We show up and we walk every single unit. We do a complete full um, financial and lease file audit, right? So every single lease file gets touched. We, we review, we make sure it matches rent rules. We ask questions, right? And it's, it's a pretty um, full scope, you know, invasive process, right? I mean, it's a full due diligence. I mean, contractors of every flavor. We have the plumbing guy, we have the roofing guy, the electrician, you know, checking, touching, uh-huh. feeling, all of it, right? Inside that, and that's, out. That's incredible. So with, with that many moving parts, especially the trades, getting everybody there for the same maybe two, maybe three day period. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming you must be working this ahead of time to try and set it up, but how does it go really? That's exactly right. And in this, um, I guess I would 
you know, in competitive environment. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes, you know, you need to be working on this stuff even before you have the contract. So for example, we just had an LOI accepted. And so we're, we're going towards the contract. So they, they've pitched the first draft of the contract to us. And so now our, our contract attorney, our real estate lawyer that's representing us is, uh-huh. is reviewing. We're all reviewing the, the, the document, but there's so much more going on in the background. I mean, we're, we're talking with our investors already, getting them, you know, um, you know, prep for this upcoming uh, opportunity. Um, we're talking with um, our due diligence teams, asking them to clear their calendars. We're trying to narrow in on, you know, is it going to be Monday or Tuesday? Or is it going to be Thursday or Friday? And which mm-hmm. week, you know, we're looking out a week or two mm-hmm. from now, like when, when can we get there? And we're trying to anticipate when, um, the contract will be finished and we'll have an, a oh, quote man. unquote effective date. Right. So it's, there, there's a little bit of kind of educated guessing involved. Uh-huh. Um, you know, simultaneously we're, we're working with our cost segregation, um, expert mm. to run a cost seg study on the deal so that Real all of quick, our investors you, get that. Would you explain yeah. cost segregation to the audience? Yeah. I think that's something that a lot of people don't know about. And especially folks, if you're out there doing something with single family, um, cost seg is not something that most people I've talked to have heard about. I think it's really valuable. Absolutely. That I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. And, um, this is, um, this is one of the huge benefits to our mm-hmm. investors that come along for the ride in, in any one of our projects is that we'll conduct a, a, a cost segregation study. And what that is, is it, Basically, it, it allows us to accelerate the depreciation, right, of the, of the real estate, because all of our hold periods are three to five years, you know, okay. plus or minus, right? So the investors understand that, you know, they're going to get cash flow, um, but it's, you know, one of the risks is liquidity, right? So mm-hmm. um, when you invest, it's understood that it, it, it's going to be very difficult, if at all, to, to pull your original investment out of the deal. However, you're going to get, you know, cash flow and other benefits mm-hmm. as well as um, accelerated depreciation. So the cost segregation study allows us per the IRS to um, basically compress the 27 and a half year depreciation schedule under mm-hmm. a normal real estate deal um, into a much shorter time frame because Looks we like don't it. anticipate of, you know, we don't anticipate holding the deal for 27 and a half years. Right, Investors right. want their money back. Right. right, um, right. And so um, we can depreciate some of the quote unquote personal property at a much more accelerated pace, which benefits the investors in the early years of the hold period mm-hmm. to offset some of their other qualifying income. Right now, right. I'm so not an accountant. Them. Yeah, exactly. And so, and so what, what it means is our investors and our deals get cash flow and they're essentially tax free, or in some cases, showing a loss, paper loss. Um, right. that, that can be applied to other passive income or qualifying income mm-hmm. sources. Okay. The power of real estate right there. Yep. Yep. Th- this is about the time that I should <laughs> say that I'm not an attorney. I'm not an accountant. Please don't Nor take my advice. <laughs> don't listen to anything that I say, right? My, yeah. my attorneys, my accountants yep. will ask me to say that, but you, you can see the idea here. It, there's, there's a lot of power as, you know, investing into this, especially when you take advantage of some of these depreciations. So, you know, we'll take in a cost segregation study, every, you know, appliance on the property, all the carpeting, all the electrical, Mm -hmm. you know, fixtures, plumbing fixtures, everything, because those things aren't going to last 30 years. Right. And so, you know, they they depreciate something like five to seven years and like landscaping is 15, I think, or something like that. Bingo. So we, we, we take all that 30 years of depreciation under normal conditions and compress compress it it into the first like three years. And it, it's a, it's a huge benefit to, investors, especially investors that may have realized a, a significant gain, passive mm-hmm. income gain over the last year, and they want to kind of shelter some of those taxes. Hopefully that's huge, a lot of you guys out man. there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, oh, that's fantastic. So, um, so yeah, getting back to it. So you do the cost seg study and you're moving through the rest of the inspections and. Yep. All the moving parts, secure the loan. We, we Uh announce to our investors, we host webinars, answer questions, you know, offer the opportunity to our investing, you know, community and, um, you raise the funds and, and, and close on the deal. So, um, that's a, that's a cliff's notes version. (laughs) So much going on. Yeah. Yeah, There, there's a lot of moving parts and, and believe me, Dan, it it takes a a village to, to close one of these things. I mean, I knew it was um, a big team, but this is actually more than I expected to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. in the last minute of this segment we have here, you know, how are you finding these deals? What is, what are the mechanisms? 
Yeah. So it, it's the markets that we want to be in. Um, and it's, it's just nurturing relationships. So most of our deals come from brokers. Um, and so, you know, I, I travel quite a bit. I go to the mm -hmm. market, I shake their hands. I ask how their kids are doing. I mean, th this is, it, it, again, it, boil, it goes back to what we were saying in the first segment yep, of yep. relationships, skills, right? Yeah. Um, and, and so get to know guys. Pretty soon they start showing you some deals. Pretty soon they start showing you some more deals. And then they become off-market deals. And the next thing you know, we're closing on deals. And it just becomes this kind of snowball effect. Mm -hmm. um, people can do this. And for your listeners, they can do this right in their own backyard. We've chosen to, to jump on planes and do it out of state. Um, you know, you can do that or you can do it right in your own backyard, but it all boils down to getting in bed with the brokers and, um, you know, just building those relationships, establishing credibility. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, that's how the deal started to flow in, in my experience. No, that's a really common story. And I'm, I'm working on something similar myself. So I, I appreciate it. Just not quite at the same scale you are. That's, that's incredible. You're able to operate that way across yeah. the country with a team like that. I'm impressed. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, um, with that, the segment is going to wrap here. We're going to go to commercial break, folks, but thank you for listening. Um, I hope you're as interested as I am. I think this is an amazing topic, and some of the details that Rob is getting into here are really amazing. So, catch you soon.